Hi. Today, this first lecture, we're going to start to look at uh, individuality versus team as a leadership dilemma. And we're going to try to use this as a way to show you how the lectures, the video lectures will work, along with some workshops and then application towards your, your projects and that final portfolio as you go. So we're going to look at a little bit about a current event issue and individuality. Uh, ask the question, are we making a statement? Are we supporting a cause or is it a selfish act? And then more importantly, we're going to take that and that's the workshop aspect and start to do some leadership application. And then lastly, reflect on all that, how it's going to uh, apply for you to your final project. All right, let's get started. So uh, the case we're using here, the case study is uh, started in 2016 with Colin Kaepernick, who is a quarterback for the 49ers and he started to do a protest where he was sitting or kneeling for the national anthem. And the question is here, is that an expression of individuality within it, and is there room for that within a team sport? If you're not familiar with this case, or even if you are, I want you to pause at this time on the video, go to the PowerPoint and uh, view the uh, clip there for about a minute and a half. It's uh, Kaepernick doing an interview uh, explaining in his own words what his protest is about. And that's the direct research we want to do, is get it right from the, the person's mouth. Uh, all right. Some reactions to that then uh, are all over the board. Again, what Kaepernick was protesting was someone uh, provide some awareness of injustices in, the Amer in America. And his quote was, uh, freedom, justice, and liberty are for all, and it's just not happening. Um, specifically talking about some cases of police brutality. So, uh, first reaction was here from uh, Minnesota Vikings lineman Alex Boone, who was a teammate of his, and uh, to get to the heart of it, he said, I had a brother that served in the forces, and he lost friends, and I know how much it means to him. It's shameful uh, to protest in his words. Jamie Schultz, uh, who's a professor here at Penn State in the Kines Department and is a uh, international sport historian, uh, historian, takes a little different twist, saying this has nothing to do with the military, that has to do with race relations and what people in, of color endure. So again, some different reactions. If we go back and look at history, as Kaepernick said in the interview, this isn't new to America, and these protests aren't either. Uh, if you're not familiar, Muhammad Ali was a boxing champ back in 1968. Arguably one of the most fo uh, famous uh, boxers of our time. The history lesson here is know your history and go back and study that. Um, he did pass away here, but in uh, April of 1967, uh, he refused to be inducted in the U.S. Army during the time of the Vietnam War. Uh, he was convicted of draft evasion, spent five years in prison, and the argument is it was during the prime of his career. Uh, they did overturn his conviction of evading the draft, but uh, again, this is a lesson in knowing your history as we understand what has happened in the past and what's going on currently. And again, the illustration here, the picture shows how 1968, uh, Kaepernick again in, with Kaepernick in 2016, Ali, Ali to Kaepernick. Next one historically then in 1968 was the Olympics in Mexico City. Tommy Smith and John Carlos uh, were uh, 200 meter runners for the U.S. and did a protest on civil rights where they uh, used the black glove fist raised with the heads bowed. Um, pretty interesting here is the lesson here. Uh, they were actually sent home and stripped of their medals. The uh, bronze medalist was uh, uh, Norman, who was from Australia. He wore an armband um, simply and for the Olympic Project for Human Rights, and he also uh, was stripped of his medals and, and sent home to Australia. Some responses to these uh, protests, uh, President Trump, who was the president-elect at that time, 
said maybe he should find a country that works better for him. And if you've been following this at all, has been uh, uh, a very strong proponent of uh, supporting the NFL owners, as we'll get to, that you must stand for the national anthem. Uh, an old leader's response, it was President Obama, who was the current president at the time, said, quote, he's following the constitutional right to make a statement. I think there's a long history of sport figures to do so. Interesting point here, Kaepernick's jersey sales was struck, uh, shot up to number three during the protests. Also then, the uh, NAACP uh, did a response where they rallied at the headquarters to support Kaepernick. If you pause it here, down on the very bottom then on the PowerPoint, you can click and see again a, um, the interviews uh, going on during the rally so you get direct quotes and information there. Another way to get more information on these uh, current events and issues, uh, ethical dilemmas or leadership dilemmas, is to go through and find credible sources doing articles, opinions, pieces, and feedback. If you look at the very bottom there, there's a piece actually with James Franklin where he talks about dealing on social issues with the uh, Penn State football team. And then uh, last, as we move to current, currently what's going on or here in 2018 now, the NFL owners uh, came out with a response where uh, you either, as the players have to either stand for the anthem or they have to choose to stay within the locker room, otherwise they could be fined. So it's an ongoing thing, not going to go away, um, but a great issue that you as a head coach would have to deal with from individuality within a team culture. So some direct application here is social awareness, political statement, is it a selfish act that takes away from the team? And then the other question I like, what side of history do you want to be on? When you are a head coach, everything comes to you. And I always tell this statement from a personal experience. Doing nothing means something to the people within your organization. They will fill in the blanks if you don't put a position on uh, where you stand. So you need to do that. So a couple things I want you to do here quick with the workshop pause it is think about if you were a coach of a person like Kaepernick with this situation, what would be your response to that individual player or individuals doing the protest? Secondly, what would be your response to the team? You need, again, saying nothing means something. They'll fill in the blank. So you need to address the team on how you're going to go forward. And another thing to think about here in this day and age, if you're a Steelers fan at all, uh, last season, uh, Antonio Brown, great receiver, actually uh, filmed uh, the head coach talking in the locker room, and it's a place where we've always thought of as kind of a sacred spot. What's said in the locker room stays in the locker room, but my example here is it doesn't stay that way. So everything you say to your team, whether you feel it's in private or it's in public, um, has an opportunity to become part of a public conversation. And then the third one, what would be your response to the media? Uh, you, you wanna make sure you're making these three things fairly consistent, so it leads to credibility in your position. And then next, you wanna look at direct application here for as we go forward for the class. You do have to come up with a definition of what leadership is to you. More importantly, what I'm going to ask you to do over and over in the class is how do you do what you define leadership as? You've got to come up with concrete illustrations, that's the I and TRI, of how you would apply and present this. Third thing, you want to start to think about what are some different leadership styles. More importantly, what is your style? And we'll get into that in the next uh, few pieces with philosophy. What are some major objectives for you as a leader in your program? Again, how are you going to accomplish some of those? So you can come up with some really big objectives or goals, but I want to see how you're going to actually accomplish it. Give me some concrete illustrations. And then last, what is sport ethics? And again, how are you going to implement some of those values into your program? The key point that hopefully we put across here is do your homework and do all of it. Go find out what has been done in the past and what situations you have to deal with as a head coach. You can learn a lot from history. Secondly, then look at current issues and how things are dealing, dealing with it, but more importantly, how players and people react to that. And then last, 
look at uh, projections into the future. You know, what side of history do you want to be on? And again, we can learn from good, bad, whatever. You can have any opinion, but again, by doing this research, you have a better opportunity of using other people's experiences and or reactions to do a better uh, uh, design in your philosophy as you go forward. So last thing to look at is the portfolio example for your final project. Just a reminder, you can go to my website, which is actually an example of what we would call an e-portfolio or a working resume versus an essay. So what you want to think about when you're designing these written projects, they're going to look more like a website onto a document. You can add pictures and things to help you with the illustrations. There's also, if you go to uh, the header of Coach 101, there's a lot of resources there that you're welcome to use to help with your research. And then last, there's a links header that has all these coaching sites that you can use. You're welcome to use any or all of those. Again, hopefully what this did is start to give you um, a roadmap on how to deal with the lectures, a video, then to pause that and go through and see some of the clips for quality research. The third thing is to pause and make sure you do the workshops. These are your brainstorming sessions that will help you when you get to the written assignments. Every workshop is a component of those written assignments. And then last, the importance of knowing your history and doing your homework, all of it from the past to the current and then looking into the future. Thanks.